Hello and welcome to another week of art. This week we're going to focus on 2D art. Of course it would be impossible to share all that there is to share about centuries filled with glorious 2D paintings and drawings. I'll only be able to highlight a few significant ideas and pieces as we go along. 2D art is defined as having the dimensions of height and width only. Elements organized in terms of a flat surface, especially emphasizing the vertical and the horizontal character of the picture plane. In other words, it's flat. <laughs> As we begin, we'll begin to look at traditional art. Your eye will be trained to go to a specific focal point. Try to look beyond and take in the full canvas. Often when you're in an art museum, you see art connoisseurs taking a step back and tilting their heads. They may look a little silly to those that don't understand, that at every angle a piece can look different in appearance and therefore it deepens its meaning for the viewer. In the 17th century, the Baroque period derived from the Portuguese word meaning a pearl of irregular shape and this started in Rome, Italy. It was encouraged by the Roman Catholic Church which was therefore often depicting religious subjects in their churches and this was a big change from the past where art was considered demonic and pagan. It is one of the major interesting facts. As we see, here's one of the religious paintings, uh, Daniel in the Lion's Den by Rubens, and these are the kind of paintings that you might find um, in churches. Broke art is known for its embellished movement and is usually easy to interpret. It had major contrast between light and shadow, which added energy and drama to the paintings, and very realistic. In the middle of the 17th century, we also had what was called the Golden Dutch Age. The new Dutch Republic was one of the most prosperous nations in Europe, and art just began to flourish. The milkmaid on the right is a famous example of their paintings. Some felt that the paintings lacked some of the artistic beauty of the Baroque period. Now you've already looked at a couple Baroque paintings, um, but there's another one sitting on the left. What do you think? Do you think that the milkmaid is missing some of the artistic beauty as the painting on the left? Next, let's look at the 18th century. During this time, art began to become more refined. 18th century art can also sometimes be defined as the art of France. Led by Louis XIV, France began to form Europe into a new appearance with its manners and its customs and its styles. However, even though France led the way in many aspects, the artists most notably from that time period came out of Germany, Italy, and England. While the 17th century assessed reality of what was physical, the 18th century studied the inner thoughts of the mind. As the age of Romanticism dawned, the world of humanities became a matter of emotion and not just logic, which, as we already studied a little bit, would take us into the world of modern art. A great deal in part to the Industrial Revolution and the aftermath of the French Revolution, the Romantic period peaked onto the horizon in the early 19th century. It was associated with liberalism and radicalism. Free expression began to emerge and nature itself was reevaluated and painted into an emotional display. Many artists changed the landscapes and embraced the Gothic adventure. The mystical was more researched and the traditional concept abandoned. This was the beginning of what would soon be considered the modern perspective that takes us now into the 20th century. In the 20th century, art took an entirely new form. Modern art came on the scene and as we talked about in week one, people began to depart from fixed rules. Your eye was to now move around the painting and it became more about the artist than the painting itself. Let's look at some of the different forms of the time. We'll now take a quick look at the various types of art that blossomed in that era. Impressionism is relatively small, thin, yet visible brush strokes that make up a whole image. Monet is one of the famous artists to adapt this style. You can't really tell on this particular painting that you're looking at now because it's so close, but Monet is one of the famous artists that when you got close to the painting, you'd mostly see little dots but when you backed away from it, the picture would come into focus. Like Impressionism, Post-Impressionism continued using distinct brush strokes, 
but they were more inclined to emphasize geometric forms or to distort form or expressive effects and use unnatural colors. Here's just another example of post-impressionism. The next is cubism. Objects were broken up, analyzed, and reassembled in an abstract form. Some of the most well-known cubists were Brock and Picasso. Next is in expressionism. It was to present the world in an utterly subjective perspective, radically distorting it for emotional effect to evoke moods or ideas. So when you look at the painting on the right, how do you feel? <laughs> Next we have surrealism. Its works meant to feature the element of surprise. Unexpected juxtapositions and are to be an expression of philosophical and a revolutionary movement. Dadism was anti-war art. It rejected the rules of prevailing standards in art. Its purpose was to ridicule the meaningless of the modern art. And as you can probably guess, it was a little offensive to some. Pop art, probably recognized this from the 60s, employed aspects of mass culture such as advertising, comic books, and the mundane cultural objects. Referred not as much as art itself as the attitudes that led to it. Here's just a few of them. Neo-expressionism was a movement based on expressionism. Crude, colorful drawings, often violent or erotic in nature. When I went to find some paintings to actually show you so you get an idea of what it was, it was almost impossible since most of them are incredibly offensive and I couldn't even post them here. And lastly, we end with drawings of the 20th and 21st century. 2D art is prevalent and still lends beauty wherever it is in a museum, hanging on a wall, or in an office space. I hope you enjoy the reading this week. God bless.